now TSPN presents Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Good morning. Welcome to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm so excited that you joined me today. I just really, I'm really excited about the show because I just have a packed show today. I have two couples on, two married couples, and they will be each talking about um, how they serve Jesus in their marriages and how they serve Jesus in their ministries. And um, it's going to be really exciting uh, to listen to some of the things that people are doing, how to, how people are serving the Lord outside of um, outside of the church. And uh, so, before I get to that, though, I'd like to remind you what Love, Hope, and Faith is all about. This is a TV ministry that is designed and uh, my, my prayer is that you would be encouraged, deeply encouraged by the testimonies that you hear, that you would be equipped uh, with biblical tools to apply to your own life and help you live out your Christian walk and that you would be empowered by the Holy Spirit as we seek to uh, glorify Jesus um, through the show and what we talk about. And that, that's my hope and um, I always pray that, uh, that you will be, as I said, deeply moved. We as Christians, we're not here just to go to church on Sunday and, um, and serve each other. We're here to serve the world as Christ served the world. So today, and in fact right now, I'm just going to introduce a couple that is doing just that, and that is Bonnie and Bob Lloyd. Good to have you this morning. Well, good morning. Good to be here. You guys are nice and bright. Yellow. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Nice and sunny. Kind of matched the set, though. Yeah. Um, and so you guys are with the Baptist Church, Sierra Baptist Church yes. of Country, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we've never met, so this is kind of fun. I love having people on that I've never met, and I get to really learn more about you guys. Mm -hmm. And as your, as your shirts indicate, you're with the das Disaster Relief. Actually, uh, let me hold up your, your uh, brochure here. Disaster Relief California. California Southern Baptist Disaster Relief is the brochure here. And um, you actually have an interesting logo. Tell me more about that. The, the arch at the top uh, represents the worldwide link that uh, all of our uh, cleanup units and feeding units have throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheat, uh, <coughs> the logo there, uh, is sort of representative of uh, the food that uh, we just need for daily life. Absolutely. And the fish is mm -hmm. the spiritual connection that we feel uh, we bring uh, to uh, a scene when we're helping people. Absolutely. Um, I've never interviewed anyone that was involved in disaster relief, so I have so many questions, and I really could actually fill up a whole show with, with some of your stories, I bet. Mm -hmm. We only have you on for two segments today, but <coughs> before we get to your this, this ministry, um, let me hear more about each of you and, and quickly how you became, how did you become a believer, Bonnie? Um, I accepted Christ as my Savior at a church camp mm -hmm. in a place called Casadero. It's over by the Russian River. Um, and as a result, I still have a, um, a special place in my heart for camp ministries. Also. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Camps are, they're so, um, they stay in your heart forever. Yes. Yeah, the yes. memories made there. That's awesome. And how about you? I was a preacher's kid, so my parents obviously were sharing with me what it meant to make that personal decision for Christ to come into your life. But it was, uh, you know, a friend's mom that really said the right things at the right time. And I accepted the Lord and brought him into my heart uh, when I was eight. And awesome. uh, since then, it's just been an ongoing, growing uh, journey Absolutely. with the Lord. I love that. Ongoing, growing journey. Absolutely. And how did the two of you meet? Um, we met at California Baptist University College. It's, it's, it's a university now. It was a college when we were there. Yeah. Um, and down in Riverside. And um, we met... Um, at there, and our first date was a tennis match. Who won? <laughs> I love it. You go, girl. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Yeah, you can't. You can't let the guys beat us. No, not. <laughs> so it was love. It was love right after that, right? I thought so. <laughs> yeah, good. And you've been married how many years? 48 years. 48 years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm Thank sure you, that, God. yes, what a huge blessing by the grace of God, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so you, uh, you know, you're involved in, I'm sure along your journey you've been involved in many ministries, but mm -hmm. a, special, a special ministry to you is this disaster relief. How did you get involved in this? Mm -hmm. uh, we had retired early from education. Uh, both of us were in school administration, and we retired early um, and just felt we wanted to, fit into some activities that we knew my dad happened to die too early and I thought you know I don't want to have my life go by without having done some things that in case cancer is a part of my family that it might take me early so we we saw the training offered um, uh, in California we took it and uh, it was a year or two before we actually got our first call yeah wow and how did, what did you think when he 
you brought this up. What was your first reaction uh, about uh, doing this? Um, oh, I was all for it. Okay. Because, again, that was, we wanted to be able to um, do volunteer things. When you're in education, you don't have very much time, especially in administration, maybe two weeks in a year that you can actually have an off yeah. time just for a vacation. So mm -hmm. the whole concept of being able to do something for the Lord in that kind of way was it's, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to get trained mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're going to be available. Mm -hmm. So what was your first disaster? It was 9-11, as a wow. matter of fact. Wow. Uh, wow. We, um, were, it was toward the end of that uh, whole uh, cleanup time back in New York, but uh, there was need because each state has their own set of volunteers. Um, there came a time where they said, you know, California, um, we need additional help. And so at that particular time, we um, were working with the Salvation Army, and the Salvation Army says, okay, California, send out a, a feeding team. So we worked... Uh, one of our teams was at uh, Ground Zero, and we were stationed at um, Staten Island, where wow. they were doing all of the sifting and so forth. And were you scared? Yes. I, not um, scared for your physical body, and just because it was such a different culture at that moment in New York. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... How soon after 9-11, I mean, how soon did you arrive on the scene after the, the incidents? It, well, I think there were about three or four weeks. We were toward the end of the cleanup time. Okay, so okay, it was, okay. uh, okay. they were within two or three weeks after our team left, uh, they were shutting down mm -hmm. the, the, the whole cleanup, and mm -hmm. they were then ready for the recovery part. Mm -hmm. They were basically looking for DNA. They were sifting for DNA wow. at, at all. And the thing that I remember always, and every time I see a seagull, I think about that, they were always shooting these loud cannon things, noise cannons, to keep the seagulls away from wow. where they were Wow, working. yeah, those seagulls, they can be a nuisance. And yeah. Especially, and I never even, even thought of that. But yeah, yeah. DNA. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So how long were you on that scene? We were there about 10 two days. Two weeks, uh, 10 days. Okay. 10 days. Okay. So two weeks, yes. But what kind of challenges did you face? I think the biggest challenge was trying to, uh, our job was just to maintain the food, have it ready, but there were times where we were out in the, the dining area, um, and the individuals, the, the service people, the, the, the military, the, the police that were, that, that were working, we did not have the training, uh, and I'm, uh, we now do have more training, but just being able to dialogue with them, that they were not ready to talk, and it was a difficult time. So all we could do was just sit back and just pray for them because we knew who knows what was going through their mind as they're, as they're doing their volunteer work. Yeah, so uh, horrific. But, yeah, 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 absolutely. So it, uh, we now realize that we wished we'd had more uh, training to be more of a counselor or, or chaplain. Or a chaplain, time, mm -hmm. but, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you, I mean, I, I know you're not chaplains, but I'm sure you've had these conversations probably multiple we, times with people. Mm -hmm. And we have taken chaplain Oh, training. have you? Okay, yes, okay, good. As okay. a result, right. Another one of our other deployments that we went on that really specifically made us say we've got to get some chaplain training also was in Katrina. And we worked, we also were in a feeding unit there. And we worked what's known as the line, so the people would drive their cars um, into this big church parking lot, and we would have things like mops and bleach and towels and stuff. And the, the people would drive through and say, could I have this, could I have that? And that was one of the things that we did. And um, we heard horrific kind of stories. Like, for one, of, one lady said, <clears throat> oh, I, I need a mop because I need to... I need to try and clean up, and um, um, I need some t uh, some towels. And my dad killed himself last night. Oh I mean, just gosh. they would just you know these kinds of things, yeah. and that's when we for sure said you know we need to. Of course, Jesus helps you in those kinds of circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as you minister through right. Him. Right. But we realize we need to have some training. Equipping. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That, that we mm -hmm. can help a little bit more. And absolutely. Um, so that's what really solidified chaplaincy training for us. So is that what you do now? Is you serve as chaplains? That's just one of the uh, okay. deployments. Uh, whenever they send out a a newsletter or uh, an email blast, they'll say we need chaplains or we need uh, yellow caps. Yellow caps are just 
the worker bees. Mm -hmm. uh, a blue cap is our way of saying we need crew chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always a chaplain, a, a part of each, de each team. Um, and uh, we had a situation, we, we recently helped in Hawaii uh, after the hurricane. And uh, that was, I was the crew chief of that particular team. We were doing chainsaw cleanup uh, for the homeowners there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I realized that my chaplaincy training came into play. Um, one of the homeowners was not present. I, I, we needed the homeowner there before we started work, so I called him, and he happened to be in Hilo. And his conversation was such that I could tell he just did not want to be bothered. He just, no, it's okay, I'm fine. But I kept talking because that's what we're trained to do, yeah, is let yeah. him talk a little more. And yeah. I said, no, I... You know, we can wait. We'll come back in 40 minutes after you finish doing your bill paying, etc. But as a result of me taking a little more time and listening to him, we got him back there and then realized he had other traumas that he was mm -hmm. going through besides just the hurricane. Yeah. So we were very thankful that we didn't just sort of say, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. go ahead with your mm -hmm. business. Exactly. That there was that more trained to see that, yeah. trained to spot yeah. that, yeah. So and to pull it out of people. Yeah. So it sounds like what, a lot of what you do is a lot of listening, a lot of asking questions yes. and then listening. Right. Not so much telling, but, you right. know, yeah. And I think sometimes Correct. we, no matter what situation we're in, we have a tendency to do a lot of telling, and mm. uh, people really need to be listened to, especially when they're in dire straits like That's that. That's correct. Yeah, That's absolutely. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and well, we're going to go to break soon, but I wanted to, when we come back, I'd like to hear, you know, there's the classic question, you know, <clears throat> that people ask. Even Christians sometimes ask this. Why would God allow these these uh, terrible things to happen? I'm sure you've come across that question many times. And uh, how do you handle that? And, and I'd like to find out what kind of God sightings you've had uh, while doing this kind of work. Okay, mm -hmm. so please stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching your local television. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith, and I'm here, as I said, with Bob, with Bonnie mm -hmm. first here, Bo Bonnie and Bob Lloyd, and you're talking about the disaster relief that you're involved in, and mm -hmm. gosh, you, we're just having some great conversation off camera, too. I'm so intrigued with what you guys do. You brought some pictures I want to look at in a minute, but before we, we went to break, I asked you, um, what do you say to people who say, how could God allow this to happen? What do you say? What's your response to that? Okay. Um, we talk with them a little well, first off, sometimes when people are saying that, it's just a hurt thing yes. that, that's mm -hmm. coming out. They really don't want to know that answer so much as they're just expressing their frustrations, their fears, and, and what have you. Exactly. So, so we still let them talk some more, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we also say that, you know, this is the, the world is not Eden. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so things are going to happen. Nature is going to happen. Mm -hmm. The typhoons come through, yeah. and um, we then talk about also how um, that we feel that we're here in service to you, in volunteerism to you, because that way y you can see maybe the hands and feet of yes. Jesus Amen. at work, Amen. a servant's heart, absolutely, um, Amen. the love that He gives Amen. Um, through that, and. That's the way we deal with that question. Yeah. Again, it's the people are in a trauma situation. Their emotions They're crying are, out. Right. Yeah, Their emotions exactly. are raw. They do not want a theological discussion yeah, exactly. of exactly. You know, right, God exactly. at that particular right, exactly. time. It's just them hurting. Mm -hmm. And then we listen yeah, and amen, hear amen. their story. I love that you can be Jesus in the midst of chaos. We talked on camera about chaos. Mm -hmm. You're saying you're a person who likes to be really organized. And, and How do you deal with that? And we find that as we... Um, uh, you know, we'll show pictures in a minute of setting up a mass feeding kitchen where you're mm -hmm. trying to feed uh, 20,000 meals a day. When you mm -hmm. look at the logistics of everything that is taking place, if you have someone that is not properly putting things in order, it makes us stressful. Yeah. In turn, as we are contracted with the Red Cross to provide so many meals, if they're not ready for their trucks to deliver to the shelters, stress levels go high. Yeah. So. We sometimes have to put ourselves in, in second place and, and flow with what is happening. Yes, it, it, absolutely. It may be that there are other things that have taken place, and we just have to, uh, you know. Go with it. Mm -hmm. Go with go it. With it. And let go and let God. And mm -hmm. let God. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. 
and bring well, some let's, pictures. Well, let's so show some pictures if Austin will be kind enough to kind of zoom in on some of these pictures. You can tell us a little bit about each one. What's this a picture of? Um, this spring, we had in California, all of our churches uh, have, had given money to help in this effort. So for six months, we have been sending teams to the Philippines to assist uh, their schools in getting roofs. Uh, this happens to be, believe it or not, a little kitchen where sixth graders would cook their meals each day. But that was just one of the activities we did in disaster rebuild activities. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, this is um, at the end of our deployment. The students of the school um, all came out and sang songs and gave us thank you notes and just what were just wonderful spirit and yeah. they um, and that was their thank you time. Okay, right there. good, good. A, a picture of our feeding units in some situations at Katrina, which this was taken at. Uh, they were running uh, two session, two meals, a breakfast and a, and a lunch, and so this is. Uh, the large tilt skillets and the mass feeding kitchens that we have as we are working providing food for the Red Cross shelters. Okay. There's an aerial view of the many semis that are involved in wow. uh, the mass wow. feeding kitchens. Wow. Uh, we wow. bring in our, what an effort. Mm -hmm. it's, each state has their own kitchens. Uh, we have uh, uh, 60 to 70 throughout the U.S. Mm -hmm. Different states have their own kitchens that we provide. And we partner with the Red Cross, of yeah, course. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and this is me pulling branches in the Oklahoma ice storms. Mm -hmm. um, we, again, had a chainsaw crew that went and assisted um, people with... Um, Oh my gosh, large trees on there over their driveway and uh, can't get into their house. And wow. So we did things like that. That was very cool. Very, very Yes. Cool. You say ice storms, yes. I can imagine. Yes. yes. Um, this is the chainsaw team working on the Albizia trees um, on the big island of Hawaii. The typhoon kind of hit the southernmost part of that. Um, southeast part of that island, and it knocked down all these Albizia trees, which are invasive trees from um, uh, Australia. And uh, our task was to um, clean up Albizia trees and to assist the homeowner. Wow. There, I was telling Bob, I said, it reminded me of a giant squid. The root yeah. balls would come up, which was like the squid's eye, and then these tentacles, oh I mean, gosh. these branches are these yeah, tentacles. Yeah, it looked pretty right? intense. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. What was this one? That, another, that is, yeah, just, another yeah, one. Just about getting yeah, it right, all done. Trying to get it done. Yeah. And then we're back at the Philippines okay. with that one. Okay, good. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of experiences <coughs> you've had. Mm, so in yes, these experiences, you, what, what have you learned about your own faith? Um, I, for me, um, I have been stretched. God challenges me every time we go on a deployment to stretch because I have my little comfort zone. Yeah. Um, because when you go on a deployment, you will be sleeping at a church, mm -hmm. in a church gym, mm -hmm. or in church Sunday school classrooms on a, on a mat. Or if we go overseas, then there's another whole culture that we deal with as to, as to what we're doing. So... For me, God strengthens me by stretching me out of my Amen. comfort zone. Amen. And no matter how fearful I am at the beginning, thinking about, well, well what about toilet stuff? And what about yeah. where am I going to mm -hmm. sleep? And what about the food? And, you know, am I going to be sure I take off my shoes at the right time in the right places? And, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that culture thing is, God always meets my needs. Yeah. And therefore, I am so thankful for that because God sees my stress, relieves that, and then allows me to be able to listen to the stresses of the clients that we serve. And I think that when we <clears throat> allow ourselves to be stretched like that, our faith, we get to see how big God really is. Mm, you know, we get to see how massive he is. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're, when we're in our comfort zones, you know, we're playing it safe. We don't see mm -hmm. God as mm -hmm. he really is, I don't think, you know. And when you're, like you said, when you're stretched like that, it really increases our faith. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. That's awesome. How about you? I, I just have seen repeatedly, every time we go, uh, an example of Jesus sharing with those who are hurting, I'm not alone. I mean, you're not alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here these people will say, well, why are you here? And when we begin to talk with them, I think they begin to see, you know, God is everywhere and he is listening to your hurts and we can share. We, God is listening through us as we talk with them. Uh, many, many times we've seen over and over again, I'll get frustrated dealing with a homeowner because he doesn't want us to be there. 
I'll never forget one a fire in, in uh, Concow up near Oroville. A gentleman did not want us there. He was very bitter about the firemen because of things that had happened. But we continued just to listen with him. We continued to clean up his, his, his lot. But when he was finished, as we usually pray with them and offer them a Bible with our signatures and just saying, we're, 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 we're with you. He says, no, no, I want to pray first. He says, I've been away from the Lord. Wow. But he began to see, I have some hope, even though I mm -hmm. thought the house I just paid for is gone. Yeah. At least it's clean now, and yeah. I can look now to another day, and that's what we're hoping. Amen. As, Amen. As hope in the circumstances, yes. hope, no matter right. what. Hope right. in the circumstances. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. So have you had any challenges to your faith? Uh, challenges um, to, to, our to be patient sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to just... Uh, you know, I, I can't see why, and usually that is when we're working with our own crews, can't you? <laughs> but but because, yeah. because of our Chaplain. training, we, we realize, okay, take a step back, take a deep breath, mm -hmm. real deep breath, and just wait a minute. The Lord will put some peace here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, the, the, our faith has just been strengthened time yeah. after time Amen. Um, Amen. As, as we're there. <clears throat> how do you prevent, um, we have just a few minutes left, but how do you prevent getting, you know, um, you know, being caught up in your own anxieties and fatigue and all those things. What do you do to, what do you, how are you ministered to so you can minister to others? Uh, again, we do have the chaplain that mm -hmm. not only ministers to the team but also to the homeowner. But we have something called um, operational stress first aid. And uh, it, it, again, it's a training that helps us be cognizant mm -hmm. of what's happening to our team member. Yeah. You know, and, you know, are they, are, like for example with Bob, I'm always <coughs> watching their feet mm -hmm. when they begin to start shuffling or stump, you know, not picking their feet up, then I say, well, maybe it's time for a water break. Maybe we need to do a sit-down 15-minute yeah. water debrief. break. So you're sensitive right. to those signs. Yes. and mm -hmm. then the other thing, go ahead. Tell At the end of the day, we take time to <coughs> operationally debrief what took place that day. That's great. But the yes. chaplain then takes and says and, and guides us in our thinking on how are we spiritually, uh, how, how are we psychologically, emotionally today? Yeah, uh, so taking we, a temperature. Yeah, right. yeah exactly, yes. right. exactly. And so... How have you, have you been able to apply these things you've learned in, in your daily life, even when you're not in a disaster? Absolutely. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <coughs> Yesterday, <laughs> this is, this is going to sound weird, but I um, was eating watermelon, and I was all finished, and there was, like, juice in the bowl, and I managed to spill it on the floor. Mm -hmm. So as far as operational stress for state is concerned, I went from being green, enjoying my watermelon, to being, like, orange, <laughs> because now I had this mess <coughs> on the floor. Mm -hmm. But being able to recognize mm -hmm. what had just happened mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, and that's yes. real. We get, right. yeah, we spill our coffee, we get yes. irritated and, you <laughs> yes. know, yeah, right. exactly. But understanding, you know, all of that yeah. that's happening. And being able to think it through. Yes. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. and, and understand your triggers and yes. all those things. Yes. So that's so helpful, probably just serving the body just in church and just in your life, as right. I said, yes. I can imagine. Or in a store, going yeah. out through a checkout stand yeah. and right. watching people around you, mm -hmm. being able to, mm -hmm. you know. So would you, would you recommend people step up and volunteer in this way? You can volunteer, and you don't have to do the physical stuff. We have jobs where people can be trained to work in the Incident Command Center. If you're good with computers, you're good with organizing. Uh, there, is just, there are just ways that people can volunteer. Besides uh, physically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a lot to do. There's, the, the, uh, there's a few, few workers, probably, in relative right. to, the, to the number of incidents, I bet. So, um, yeah. training is important. Yeah, exactly. Training is important. Mm -hmm. What's the scripture that says the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few? Workers are few. Right? Yes. Exactly. You guys have been fantastic this morning. Thank you so much for being my guest. As I You're said, welcome. I could have had you on for the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot more questions, but thank you for taking the time out today to, to meet with me. It's a pleasure. Um, and I'm free, really be praying for your ministry. So thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Okay, stay tuned. When I come back, we're gonna, I'm going to introduce you to another couple, so stay tuned.